Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring to be more precise to our friends here at Atomic Shop and I have a quite an interesting announcement to make because I namely bought this 2000 horsepower Nissan GTR, well in my dreams, maybe some other time, but I have actually bought the most expensive shoes in my life, these ones, OMP EVO R and they cost slightly below 440 euros. And you might ask the question for a very good reason, Mija, why the hell would you spend 440 euros on shoes? Well, I'll explain to you everything in detail in this video, but long story short, the operation of pedal while driving a car, race car or a track car, is for me as a driver, is even more important when it comes to having control over vehicle uh, than having the steering input control. <laughs> transfer that allows you to rotate the car more or prevent certain things to hit on the brakes or go on the gas as much as you want or doing heel and toe of course is even more important as mentioned and at the end of the day also on YouTube and on Instagram or TikTok or whatever social media everyone is appreciating the footwork videos that we put out so it's also nice to have something that is good looking. Now, before I'm gonna go into detail on to how to buy FIA shoe, let's take it a step back, and namely to the shoes that I'm wearing right now. Right now. <laughs> uh, these are Adidas Ultra Boost, and uh, Ultra Boost is a brand of, or a type of shoe that I've been wearing almost pretty much every time since of the 2000. 18 or 17. They're extremely comfortable. This, by the way, no brand deal or whatsoever because we'll be talking about multiple brands. However, Atomic is running 10% discount during the 24 hours of Nürburgring week. So you could come here and do some shopping. Not for Ultra Boost, though, you need to go to some other store. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. They're extremely comfortable for, especially for lots of walks because, as you can see, they have a very thick sole. The main issue, however, when you start driving, you need to rest your foot on the floor to, while you're operating the pedals. And because you have this sole, it's not flat and you always keep like balancing the shoe. So even when I am on the long distance trips with my daily car, I would swap these out for some other driving, purpose driving shoe that I have at home. Now, moreover, not only are they uncomfortable when it comes to the heel, so you cannot do heel and toe, when it comes to the toe, they're also quite wide here. They have this thingy here sticking out. Sometimes it's like really fashion type of thing, but for driving, you want to have as narrow a shoe as possible and nothing that is there to, that can uh, well, make your foot stuck behind the pedal because it can, can cause a quite a difficult situation. And finally, also the thickness of the sole. Here, its main purpose is to absorb all the shocks and to be as comfortable as possible. However, you want to have optimal pedal control. And sometimes we're talking about literally millimeters of pedal input to make the car rotate or literally if the car has no ABS, you can brake up to a certain point. And if you brake one millimeter too much, you will go into, well, you will lock up the wheels. And here, if you apply more pressure, it will start absorbing the pressure through the sole and therefore you have, again, less control. So as comfortable as they are for daily walks and daily tasks for driving, they're absolutely horrible. This is why we have different driving shoes. Now, these shoes is what you know from me wearing in all my videos. I bought them actually in 2019 for my racing. 2019, they're already four years old and you can start seeing it here actually. Remember this damage here because we're gonna talk about it later on. But like all the like uh, clothing pieces, shoes or pants, you know, 
although they're old, they are the most comfortable and I feel the most comfortable with them. And actually they offer a very good balance between comfort and daily life because I still do lots of talk, uh, walking during the day and driving. But it was really time to swap them out and this is why I went for what I have. Now, one thing in between, uh, of course there's also compromise. From what I've explained to you, you can now make more or less uh, a conclusion is if you are buying a shoe which is oriented at driving uh, and you want to compromise, for example, I have here, which is also something that I have, Piloti shoes. Piloti, that says as well, pilots, drivers, they're actually, as you can see, they have a very nice compromise. They have this flat heel so you don't have to fight yourself and balance constantly where your foot is. They have a very flat sole. And they still are, they're actually very beautiful and nicely looking, so for daily, for casual looks, they, they do the job per, 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 uh, perfectly and purposeful. The only issue is, of course, they do not offer FIA protection, something that you might need or would need if you're going to do any racing. Or maybe if you're driving some very crazy built car, such as this, where things are sometimes on the limit and can go wrong and all of a sudden you're gonna have fire coming through your foot well. Then you want to have something that offers additional fire protection. So let's talk about now about the actual driving shoes and the ones that I have. But before we go there, do you really need to spend 400 euros on racing shoes? No, absolutely not. As mentioned, having these things in mind uh, when it comes to comfort, the thickness of the sole and the, the heel and the narrowness is something that you need to take, take, to take into account when you will be buying shoes. We have here actually a number of shoes that Atomic is providing, is offering for sale and they all start actually from or, uh, already 135 euros I believe is the cheapest one, around 150. And they're perfectly, uh, perfectly fine because they all come with FIA homologation. So this means they're fire retardant. So if you have fire, they will protect your feet. They have, as you can see, all of them. We have here one, two, three. We have even some nice Martini racing stuff. They all have very flat sole, which is important for pedal control. They're very narrow in comparison to your daily sneaker, like Nike Air Max or whatever floats your boat. Uh, and of course, a very, uh, flat heel so you can have a nice rest there and uh, all of these main characteristics but what differentiates let's say 150 roughly euro shoe this and the one that I have which is 440 now first of all a quick comment why I spend so much money on shoes because as mentioned previously with the ones that I showed you here they serve me for years and I'm driving thousand cars by now per year or so uh, or at least thousand laps so I want to have something that provides me constant control and uh, the good feeling. Now speaking of feeling the main difference when you start differentiating unfortunately we do not have any scales here but maybe well that doesn't do the job but you should have to believe me that this shoe is roughly three times heavier than this very expensive OMP Evo R. I don't even know the brand because it's not about the branding, it's about the quality. But the lightness of the shoe is extremely important, especially since I'm doing not only endurance racing, but also driving during the day here in public sessions, on track days, etc. And sometimes we end up driving more than I would do during a race. And feet comfort, so we have here ventilation and lightness, is extremely important for also the endurance because the last thing you want to be during the race or during the driving is to get distracted like ah oh, my feet are sweaty mm -hmm, it's getting a bit hot there oh i missed the breaking point i'm in the wall i crashed things like that happen this is why you pay more for comfort because they need to maintain their fire retardant qualities while still being uh, well trying to become extra light so lightness is what you pay extra for not only lightness in the, the overall material, but also more, uh, more thin sole. And this is also done for, so you would have even better throttle control. So the, the less material there is between your foot and between the actual pedal, the more pedal control or the more feeling you will get with the practice, of course, because this is something that you really need to uh, feel and this is something that you would do you can practice a lot on the simulator and something what i taught myself now in addition remember this damage that i showed you on these shoes 
it happens actually quite often from changing the pedals uh, often and quickly. So these ones come with additional protection layer for especially to avoid these kinds of damages appearing on the shoes. Moreover, they also have this fancy lock mechanism because I thought like, okay, you know what, let's try to go with something different because as you can see, the older ones that I have, they have shoelaces. Now, all of the shoelaces, shoes, that you're gonna buy, important thing when you're gonna buy one, because we have, for example, here, these martini shoes that I showed you earlier. They are more of like, I don't know, gentleman driver shoe that don't want to be too racy. Uh, they have shoelaces, they are, uh, are they even FIA approved? You don't even see FIA approval here, to be honest. No, indeed, this is not an FIA homologated shoe, although still a very good driving shoe. And another thing that gives it away is, look, it's quite low. In case of a fire, uh, you want to have more protection. So these OMP shoes that I have, they are higher to offer additional protection for your ankles. Could be quite important. Speaking of FIA homologation, these ones and pretty much all of them that have been produced in the last i believe since 2019 because these ones have it as well the other adidas shoes of mine they are homologated for 10 years so you can see here uh, not valid after 2033 so although i'm replacing my current or old shoes after four years of non-stop driving you can buy this and if you're only doing a couple of races a year they're still valid for 10 years so 400 euros over 10 years that's what like 40 euro a year that's actually quite an okay investment the problem is you always need to if you're gonna have a laced shoe make sure that they have like this lip to cover up the laces because the last thing you want is laces getting untangled or stuck behind pedals and well i don't need to explain to you what kind of awkward situation it may cause so these are laceless we have this mechanism that I actually am familiar with from uh, motorcycle driving with CD shoes that I had. So it should be very, I guess, convenient. How do we do it? Hmm. Oh, just open it up, put it on. First time I'm gonna put them on. <laughs> well, first I would need to take out the, the paper. <laughs> Ta-da. By the way, today is uh, Monday the 15th of May, so all the videos that will be shot with these shoes uh, are shot after because right now we have a backlog of like 65 videos to put So pretty convenient very light now another thing is the more uh, The more expensive the shoes get not only do they get lighter or thinner They also get narrower because all the professional drivers when you look in into the paddock the main difference between guys like me who are just there for fun and guys like Kevin Estray and uh, Well, you insert the name here Adam Christodoulou all the guys there skinny like this because every kilogram matters and they also therefore have also quite narrow feet now to be honest these kinds of guys usually have completely custom-made shoes. The shoes for that, they cost like 550 euros or even more. This shoe, as mentioned, is extremely light. Uh, Formula One shoes are actually even lighter in that regard. So this could be like the lightest shoe that there is on the market for consumer market, but Formula One shoes are even lighter, but they only last one race. After that, because they're so thin, after that you can throw them away. Apart from the homologation label, there is also another thing that you can find inside your shoe and this is this so-called hologram. And this is really nerdy and interesting. Every shoe comes with a unique number that you can trace back when it was produced, which batch, where, etc. So not only to see the authenticity of it, but let's say for example something goes really wrong and the shoes didn't protect my feet in case of a fire or something then we can see why it happened and maybe they can do a recall or 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 so that's like really nerdy i guess that's kind of it uh long story short uh if you're going to be driving things that you need to be aware of is the the heel that so you have good balance of the car the thickness of the sole the thinner the better uh, and also the overall comfort if you're going to be doing multiple driving longer driving more races uh, or multiple cars like i'm doing every day uh, you get what you pay for and uh, in my case it is a very justified justified purchase because I'm doing lots of driving and I simply need to have the best because I cannot have 
any driver excuse. So you cannot, I, I cannot use any driver excuse now because oh, my shoe was not good or something. Um, that's kind of it. Yeah, I just have a couple of more shoes if you're still watching at the end of the video. I bought these actually in 2018, also Adidas, but I only wore them with my racing and I bought these Alpine Stars in 2018 uh, to do taxi driving. We got a taxi license, but after that I stopped doing taxi and I actually made them just my sim racing shoes because actually with they are very thick sole and when you walk, it's like they hear you coming from miles away. Uh, so I just, uh, and also they're blue and my race suit is white. So that's why some fashion statements. Right, that's kind of it. If you have any more additional questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, but I would say also come over to Atomic Shop. They have a, a very trained, qualified and friendly team that will help you with your shoes, with your helmets. Check out the helmet video we did before last year. Uh, and let us know maybe we should do something on the gloves next or a suit. Uh, and I hope uh, this was for you very useful. Let me know what kind of shoes you have and how long they lasted you and if it was a good purchase. That's kind of it. Let's uh, go, I would say, do some driving with 24 hour race. No, I am actually be driving uh, in RCN. So uh, this will be the first time we'll be using this shoe. So see you then. Bye bye.